Kamala Harris was sworn in minutes before Biden as the nation's 49th vice president, becoming the first woman, first black person and first Asian person to serve as the second most powerful person in the government. The ceremony went off without a hitch but there were plenty of key takeaways from the historic moment. Sworn in at 11.48 Eastern Standard Time, Biden repeated the theme he campaigned on, America needs to unify after four divisive years of Donald Trump. The new president never mentioned his successor by name in his 21-minute address. But he called for an end to political rancor in favor of a return to policy debates that are passionate but not nasty. I will be a president for all Americans, all Americans, he said. Politics doesn't have to be a raging fire destroying everything in its path. Every disagreement doesn't have to be a cause for total war. I know speaking of unity can sound like a foolish fantasy these days. I know the forces that divide us are deep and are real, Biden continued. But I also know they are not new. Biden said the country will need to come together if it wants to tackle its biggest challenges, notably a pandemic that has killed more than 400,000 Americans and infected millions more. My fellow Americans, in the work ahead of us, we're going to need each other, Biden said. We must finally meet this pandemic as one nation. We will get through this together, together. Kamala Harris made history when she took the oath of office Wednesday, becoming the first woman of color to serve as vice president and breaking gender and racial barriers with her role as Biden's no. 2. The daughter of an Indian mother and a Jamaican father, Harris' ascension to vice president has been celebrated by Indian Americans and African Americans across the country. Harris was sworn in at 11.41 a.m. by Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, the first Latina member of the High Court. Today we mark the swearing-in of the first woman in American history elected to national office, Biden said in his inaugural speech. Don't tell me things can't change. For the first time in more than 150 years, the departing president chose not to endorse the peaceful transition of power by attending the inauguration of his successor. Trump's decision to skip the ceremony was no surprise. A president who for four years shattered presidential norms, Trump has for weeks called Biden's win illegitimate, spreading false claims of election fraud. And he was impeached by the House earlier this month for inciting a violent mob of supporters to storm the Capitol building in an effort to disrupt Congress's recognition of his opponent's win. Instead, Trump left the White House hours before the inauguration and headed to his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida. We will be back in some form. Trump told supporters during a farewell ceremony at Joint Base Andrews that featured a 21-gun salute and a military band playing, Hail to the Chief.